everyone and welcome to another episode of FTB Revelation. How are you guys doing today? How's life? I know what you're asking yourself. Lush, where are we? The location is insignificant. We needed an insignificant location because we needed to experiment a little bit with Flux. I want a primordial pearl and we're going to get it today. I hope so. I made some causality collapsers, that's all I could afford, so let's hope we will get it after 7 attempts. Did you get it? No. Fine. I just heard something, so there should be another rift. Oh, hi. hi. <laughs> okay, uh, we try again. Second time is the charm. It's probably not, but you know. Okay, third time's the charm. No. You know, I have a feeling that we're not getting a primordial pearl because we did not see a taint seed. I don't remember if we observed one of them or not. So, this time I'll wait a bit. Actually, maybe this guy is the reason. I got it in a desert from the occultists and I haven't read it yet. Let's see what will happen. Okay, let's try it again then. Nothing. I was spawning these idiots in order to get more books, but apparently you don't need to read the book, you just have to submit it as a quest. So now something should happen. Oh perfect, we can do that. So can I get the primordial pearl now? Okay, so we got a new tab called Eldritch and we should be able to complete at least some of the research. So we can make the void metal ingot, that's good. Oh, I love this. We should make that. Yes, but you're not telling me how to get that. What, 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 what? They don't do any damage, but they're just annoying. We had enough research and observation points in order to do all the research in Eldritch tab. That's good, I guess. So let's try and see if we can get the primordial pearl now. Okay, so I did make a void metal plate, which the Tomonomicon consumed it, but everything in our Tomonomicon is now unlocked except the primordial pearl and we do have a rift let's try this again do we get it? please 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 yes 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 it's a garbage one but we got it i've been waiting to get that stupid thing during the past one year and i could not get it because i think the eldritch tab was still under Review, construction, or whatever. <laughs> anyway, we did not get the pearl, we got a fragment. We need to get the pearl, so I need to close down more rifts and hopefully we will get it. I'll be right back. Now that we have this guy, at least let us try and upgrade our Essentia Smeltery. So we're going to need an advanced alchemical construct. Oh, you use durability. It's very weird, you cannot upgrade the Tomium smeltery, you have to make a basic essential smeltery and then upgrade that one. But we can make the void metal... I need brass. Yes, as I was saying, now we can make the void metal essential smeltery, which is the best Just one. realize that in Oromancy we have unlocked the greater focus. So let's make a few advanced focuses and then make a greater one. That requires a primordial pearl. I think this primordial note is only enough to make one greater focus and nothing more. But we're gonna try it anyway. Uh, I put you here. What else do you need? Yeah, it seems we have everything. We have, we need 50 of you, we need 100 of you, and we need a little bit of you. So we're fine. Okay, very stable. That's always good. It's still very stable with just candles. <laughs> it's fluctuating between stable and very stable, okay. We're almost done anyway. Are you done? Yes! We have him. I hope it doesn't take it away. No, it didn't. Okay, good, good. Oh, we still have this guy. Okay, so I can make another one. I did make a greater focus using healing and the effects are amazing. Let me demonstrate it for you. So we're going to stab ourselves once and then we're going to walk away so that the regeneration goes away and let's heal up. 
Look how fast this is. <laughs> it's crazy. And we're done. Almost. Yep. Anyhow, I did get an extra primordial moat and we are going to make the primal crusher because it looks cool and I really want to have that. I'm not sure if it's going to be useful or not, but uh, we're going to try. I did make an extra pickaxe and now we're going to make an extra shovel and then the rest should be easy. I had to prepare a lot of essential and I think we have everything we're going to need. And I have unnatural hunger for... yeah, <laughs> for two minutes. So let's start this anyway. What can go wrong? We have everything, right? We should. And it's very stable. I have a feeling this is going to take a very long time and we are consuming a lot of essentia. That's not good. Dangerously unstable. What are you breaking? Nothing. Oh, you're dropping stuff, you jerk. It's fine, it's fine. Nothing to worry about. Um, I think we have to bail out. Yeah. The stabilizers for the arcane infusion have gone through a huge change since the last time I played with Tomcraft. In the past you needed RF, you need to focus it here and you know it was very complicated. Now apparently it's very easy. They have also a very easy recipe. So you just put them anywhere you want, of course in a symmetrical way. Then if you want them to protect the pedestals so that the items don't get knocked off, you just have to use redstone inlays and connect them to the pedestal. And when it's lighting up, it means it's working. So this pickaxe will never fall. At least I hope. So we put them here as well. We can also make a ring around the infusion altar itself. Just, I don't know, symmetry. <laughs> it's very stable. So let's try this again and let me check the essentials. Yes, it seems we have all the essentia that we're going to need. So let's try this again. Very stable. That's good. Well, with the new stabilizers, this is easy because it's still very stable. <laughs> okay. We're almost done and it's still very stable. I'm very confused. That was so cheap. These things are extremely cheap. We're done? You have garbage durability. You're gaining durability. Huh. Let me read. Reading is good. So if I use it too much, it will become uncomfortable. Huh. Oh, it has warping. I did not look at that. Okay, it's fine. This guy is basically a hammer, a shovel, a pickaxe, and an excavator all in one. If you don't hold shift, it will do a 3x3. Three three. Also with dirt. If you hold shift, it will do just one block. So I'm probably going to use it for a while until I get bored. I just wanted to have this. No specific reason. And it needs some upgrades. I already put mending, but you know. Also, I don't think it's a wise decision to play with Tomcraft anymore this episode because I think I'm going insane. Yeah, okay. I'm going insane. Yeah. No more Tomcraft today. By the way, have I mentioned that I've been a really good boy and I've cleaned up our front gate? So basically what I did is that I made a facade for our oil refinery here, which has been sitting like garbage since episode 1. It's still a garbage, but now it's a decent garbage. <laughs> anyway, I also made an entrance for our Enderman farm and I moved the smeltery from our front gate to up there. And I made a pathway from our coke oven area to our smelting area, which I think it looks nice. I put the patterns like that. Uh, they glitch out from time to time, but I think they look cool. Uh, anyway, we have our ingots, we have our tanks, everything works fine. Anyhow, one of the reasons that we got into environmental tech was to be able to fly so that I can get rid of the Flugel Tiara. So, the problem is I don't have enough elytras and I think you can duplicate them like this using a dragon scale from Quark. Yes, we can. Okay, that's nice. I'm not sure if they count as actual elytras. No, they don't. Do you? Or do I have to do this manually? Oh, they do. I don't have to go to the end. Okay, so if I put you here and remove the tiara, we should be able to fly. Can we? Oh yeah, we can. Cool. It's not consuming that much RF. It's still at 20,000, so we are fine. Now that I've gotten rid of the tiara, I can put you here and then just open it like this. Okay, that's good. One more empty slot in the inventory. There's a huge amount of real estate between our base 
and our astral sorcery area. So I was thinking if we connect them using either a viaduct or railcraft, we can utilize that real estate in order to make, I don't know, more farms, more rooms, more bases and other stuff. Cool stuff. So, um, I want to try railcraft first and see how it goes. And we are at Y level 80. We need to go down to Y level 60-ish. So let me dig down and I'll be right back. It will be millions of times easier if I dig the tunnel myself because I'll be in our Astro Sorcery area in around 5 minutes. But uh, we want to do things in a stupid way. So we are going to use a tunnel bore from Railcraft. It will dig a tunnel which is 3 by 3 by one and I think we just have to put you on a track then give you a bore head, some rails, some gravel and some coal. Then you just dig. Whoop. Okay, we need something for the garbage. But this is fun. It's very slow. Uh, let me fix it. Last time I played with Railcraft was in 1.7, so I could be very wrong. So if I'm wrong, don't laugh. I think we can just have a chest cart here, then hook it up to the bore. Did I hook it up? Oh yeah, okay. That's an achievement apparently. So now it will eject everything inside that chest. We give you more coal and see what happens. Oh yeah. That's nice. Uh, oh, okay. I can also put the gravel inside. And also the coal. Ah. Would have been nice if we would have torched the area as well. I'm just saying. We need to make more tracks and if you have railcraft in your pack, uh, it will change the recipe for making minecraft tracks. You're going to need to use a metal rolling machine. And metal rolling is a complicated profession because you cannot automate it using your applied energistic system. So if we give it 6 iron ingots, nothing will happen. It has to be in a very specific pattern. Like this. Otherwise it will not work. Uh, this is the manual version, there's also a powered version, but it needs a flux transformer. We are using it for the crusher for the glowstone thingy, but um, I need to make more. It's so stupid. It's a 2x2x2 two by two by two multi-block structure just in order to convert your flux networks into the power that Railcraft requires. So now we just need to hook it up. Uh, can I just use a flux plug? Like this? Oh yeah, that's fine. So I should be able to make tracks? Yes, perfect. If you have been paying attention so far, I did used to have a resonant reservoir of creosote oil right here. The problem is, I thought I can do this in order to make the wooden tie. It consumed it and it only gave me one. So don't use the reservoir, just use a carpenter. It seems it's more efficient. It's very slow, but efficient. To be honest, it's not that slow. Okay, we give you more tracks. Continue your work. Well, the distance was around 120 blocks and it went through it relatively fast. I'm actually happy about it. <laughs> anyway, near our astral sorcery area, which is just over there, there is a huge cave system which I love. It's full of this copper ore and the poor copper ore and it makes sense to have a huge mining facility over here and maybe have some other stuff. I don't know, other types of farms and other types of contraptions. Uh, the only problem I have is that how do we travel this distance? Do we use rails and a locomotive or do we use viaducts? I'll leave that to you. Regardless of the method of transportation that we are going to use, we need to convert this tunnel into a natural cave because I think it will look nicer. And for that, I'm going to use a mana blaster to give it a rough shape. It's going to take some time. I was thinking of something like this, slightly wider and slightly more detailed. Uh, right now, this is just the start and I don't want to focus on this this episode because I want to make a tree farm. And I was thinking of making it here. I don't need a huge supply of wood, I just need a consistent supply of oak for crafting and that's it. So we're gonna have a very small tree farm. I wanted to make something which looks different. This does not look different. This looks garbage. We need to change that. I'll be right back. You know guys, making a tree farm using a farming station from Ender.io and using like two oak saplings is 
kind of boring. <laughs> I wanted to do something using golems, but unfortunately I saw that Direwolf already used golems in his tree farm, so it does not make sense to make the same thing again, because we will be bored probably. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the multi-purpose farm from Forestry. This is the center of our multi-block structure and it's a 3x3x4. This is the smallest size that you can make and the maximum size is a 5x5x4. The reason that this is important is that the size of the farm that you're going to make after that depends on the size of the central multi-block structure. This is a 3x3 so you can go 9 blocks in every direction and it will be in, in a star shape pattern, you know, it, it won't be like this. It has to be like this and you just connect the dots. But you might notice that the multi-block structure has not formed yet, so I cannot right click on it. It's going to need a few more details. You're going to need a farm controller and you cannot put any of these blocks on the third level because this is the level that your farm will be on and you can't put any of these blocks here. So you're going to need a farm controller, you're going to need a farm valve which is for inputting water and then you're going to need a farm hatch which is your input and output and then you're going to need a farm gearbox which is for power. And now you can see that the multi-block structure has been formed. You can go nine blocks in every direction, but as I said, I don't want that much oak. I just want a small consistent supply. So I'm going to go like three blocks in both directions, not in every direction, and like here and here as well. And I think this would be more than sufficient. In the GUI, it will tell you why it's not working. First off, we're going to provide it with water. So uh, you extract and you should have water. Perfect. Then we're going to give it some saplings and we're going to give it dirt and we're going to give it fertilizer from forestry. And then it's going to need RF. And I think I can just do this. Oh yeah, that, that was the hatch. This is the gearbox. You can provide power to the gearbox. And now you can see that it planted the saplings and it made hummus. It's very delicious. And if we grow the trees, it will start to harvest them and it will put them inside its output and you can extract everything through the farm hatch. Uh, the thing is, you can also make this a multi-purpose farm by putting a circuit board here and program it so that you can plant mushrooms and I don't know, nether wart or other stuff. And right now we don't need that. So it's just going to be a tree farm. Also, you might notice that the leaves don't decay immediately and you might sometimes see saplings falling down on the floor. But that's not a huge issue because the farm will collect them anyway. All of that being said, I would like to introduce you to our new tree farm, which is exactly the same design that I just explained to you. The only difference is I try to put it inside the room and I try to cover a few blocks so that it's not that visible. I just wanted to see the main farm itself, otherwise I covered the rest. I covered the entire room with black concrete so that it looks like it's in the void. And I know it's very plain, but the problem is I'm using the destructive stone using destructive demonic will from blood magic and we ran out. So so for now it's going to stay like this but I think from here it looks nice if you add more decorations it could look very nice if you don't see the travel anchors of course anyway guys I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it till the next one bye bye